turn this camera on. Hey guys, it's me, Kathy Rowe with Foodluck USA.com. Um, today is Saturday, and I'm doing it two o'clock today. Um, this weekend or this week kind of was a little off, so I was able to do it on Thursday. But here I am, um, and I feel like I have more time. I'm not rushed. Things feel a little bit better doing it this way. Maybe I'll change my date, but I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Um, so today, what we are going to be making is a French Canadian um, tradition that my family always did growing up. And I'm going to butcher this word because I should really be able to speak French good, but it's a, a tortière pie. All my French family that are, you know, say I'm good. Um, but anyway, so we're going to do this pie. And basically what it is, is it's pie crust that you, I, which is just a basic pie crust. Um, and then a meat with a potato inside. Not a shepherd's pie, it doesn't taste like that at all. Um, but on the lines of, you know what, I have ground beef, I don't know what to do with it. I have some ground pork, I don't know what to do with it. Let's combine it, put some really good spices in, and make pie, <laughs> and it's actually really good. Um, we, growing up, <clears throat> would put, uh, serve with ketchup. It was a ketchup thing. I mean, Canadians love their ketchup, I'm not really sure what that's all about, but. So let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna get this meat going because it needs to cook. Um, my oven is set to 450 and I have a pound, a bunch, a pound of ground beef. Now I'm not gonna put no, I have a non-stick pan here, so I'm not gonna really put any kind of oils in there. If you're using a pan that's not non-stick, I would probably suggest you use a little bit of oil. Um, <clears throat> part of this recipe calls for onions and garlic. What I do before I even did this was I had take I had took the onion and I put it in the pan with the garlic, which I basically oh sorry, which I basically use about um I use that that um, garlic that's in the tube, so I used about a squirt of it, one clove of garlic. I want to get this going like I said because this takes a little bit to get. Um, cooked. We have to drain this. And the reason why I did the onions first, hey Barbie, um, was because I have to drain it. I, you don't want to put the onions there and like have it all kind of crappy. So you're going to just brown your meat, combine the pork and the beef, and then we'll get started. Now, I made my pie crust earlier, um, and because it has to be refrigerated. You'll see that on my um, blog as well, the pie crust, the basic pie crust, and you might have your own. But, um, I'm not dancing here. Um, you may have your own pie crust, but the one I have is super simple. It's basically three and a half cups of flour to three sticks of butter, cold butter. And then you're going to put that in your food processor or your um, mixer with the dough hook. And then you're going to take the, um, half a teaspoon of bacon powder and a teaspoon of salt. Mix that together really well. And then add a half a cup of really, really ice cold water. And then it's like the perfect dough. You take it, cut it in half, throw it in your fridge. Half hour mat, uh, well, the, the early, you should really take it out about a half hour. And then you'll have these balls of dough that we're going to, I'll show you how to take this apart and put it into the pan. So let's get started with that. Um, so as that's cooking, I'll show you what I did too. So here's the onions that I put in the pan before this to cook down a little bit. Like I said, only because I don't want to drain all, all that out of the meat when I put it in. Also earlier, to save some time, I took two whole potatoes and I boiled them. Now, do not throw that water away because you need a cup of that potato water to put into the ingredients as we're going along, which I'll show you in a little bit. So if you are cooking your potatoes, keep one cup of that water aside. And it's going to be that starchy water that's going to keep us kind of together. Now, growing up, I'm just using a hand masher. You can use whatever you want. It's really, you have two potatoes, it's not that hard. Um, growing up, when we cooked this, I really didn't have potato in ours. Some of them we did, some of them we didn't. My grandmother, when she used to make it, would make it without the potato. But as I got older and I started kind of playing with it and doing my own kind of touch to it, um, the potato acts as a binder. Because think about it, when you're putting the meat inside the pie, um, 
in a crust, and then you cut it, it kind of just falls apart. It's still good, don't get me wrong. And growing up, I mean, that's what it was. But it wasn't like all over the plate, but it still wasn't like, if you put the potatoes in, it kind of keeps it as a binder. Okay, so as we're doing this, this is ready to go. Once that meat is done and I drain it, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, I just wanted to show you that to get that done. Now we're going to take pan and spray our pan, our pie dish, sorry. I use glass. And then we're going to go over here and I'm going to undo the dough because it takes a little bit. This is going to be a more relaxed sort of taking a little bit longer this today because I have time. It's Saturday. We're not working. This is in the fridge. And just remember, like, there's a lot of butter in this. But I kind of just want to push it out a little bit. I got my rolling pan, which I'm going to use. But I just kind of want to show you here. Move that flour over a little bit. Give myself some room here. Just basically roll this out. Flip it. Get some more flour on it. You don't want it to stick. Just roll this dough out. Now we're using a nine inch, eight inch pan. Make it be sure. I think it's a nine inch pie dish or eight inch. I don't know. Either way, it's an inch. So just make sure when you roll out the dough, you have enough to put the bottom layer in your pan. I put a lot of butter in there. Well, I didn't put a lot of butter. I'm sorry. I it was really cold butter when I did this. So it's a little bit tougher. <laughs> you guys are going to watch me roll out the dough. I don't want to not show you, but so just basically roll that out. I'm going to take that beautiful dough. And remember, this goes right to the bottom part. I'm going to put one on top as well. And right now, I'm just going to kind of lay this in there. Don't really want to cut anything off yet. We're going to crimp the edges. Make sure I just have enough on this side. Just pull it up a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. Just basically rising up the sides a little bit so that everything is kind of combined. All right. Now, let's go here and work out these muscles. Here's my other part of my dough. That's going to be the top. So right now, the only thing I'm going to do is just basically roll this out. Maybe. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Okay. So we're going to just roll this dough out and then hold it to the side until we're done with the other, throw a little bit more flour down in your surface. Make sure it's a clean surface. Don't throw your dough on some dirty countertop. It's a little bit of a project, but I feel like it's worth it. Um, growing up, my grandmother would take all morning or all one day and just basically, um, make a few of these and freeze them because they freeze really well. You want to cut them before you freeze them, but um, you definitely can freeze them. And they're actually like, just pull it out, let it cool off a minute or warm up a little bit on the countertop and then put it inside your oven and cook it. And it's about 400 and, well it is, it's 450 degrees and you're cooking it for about 40 minutes. You remember that the inside Sorry, the inside is already cooked. You're just getting that crust of the pie um, brown, and um, that's basically what you're doing. And get the inside warm, because by the time you're done cooking it, it's weird to cook in the day. <laughs> and no lights on, which is nice because it's not shining in my face today. I got the window open a little bit, which well, you can't tell here, but up here in upstate New York, we have a lot of snow out there. Not like a gazillion icicles out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm rolling this out. I'm going to leave this sit for a few minutes only because it's a little bit cold. And I just want to kind of have an easier way to um, roll it out. So I have my strainer, which is here. And it's going to be for my um, meat, as soon as the meat gets done. Which I'm going to tend to in one second. Sorry, I'm like OCD with washing my hands. Okay, so we're getting a nice brown to it. That's all you want to do is just brown the meat. Combine it, brown it, and then after this is all, 
brown, we're going to add the seasoning into it. Like I said, you got to get that grease out of here. You don't want a greasy pie because you have the dough. And the dough, you don't want it to soak up all that nasty grease. Nobody really wants that. It's disgusting. So let's see here. It still has a little bit of ways to go. I'm just going to kind of toss it a little bit. Now, that, here's another thing that I do, which I'll show you as we go along. Um, I use a food processor to kind of chop this up. I like it, like, minced, I guess, I guess is what you would say. Um, I don't want chunks of beef or, like, different parts and not really incorporated together correctly. Um, so I use my food processor, which I'll show you. After I drained it, I then put it in the food processor. And then I will add all the other ingredients, and then we'll form the pie. And then um, when I do cook the pie, I put it on a cookie sheet because you don't want it to, it, it doesn't really overflow. I just do it for my oven so it doesn't get all crappy in there. Just in case something overflows. I mean, all my pies, I usually do that, especially with fruit. Because you don't want that to go all over your oven. That's not fun. All right. Almost. Not too much longer. So let's go back to the pie crust. <laughs> See if I roll this out a little bit more. Well, it looks like a shamrock. I'm ready for uh, St. Patrick's Day here. Yeah, there we go. Got Bella, this new roller. It's kind of funky. I'm used to the wood, old wood ones. That should be big enough. That's perfect. All right, we'll leave that here. So let me see here. I mean, it is going to cook inside of the oven, but you still don't want any kind of raw meat, especially um, when you're putting everything together and it's kind of gross. And then the timing that I put on there cooks for it being already pre-cooked. Let's see here. Okay. I think that should be about good. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So remember, before I did this, I took the onions. I cooked them down with the garlic. And I put them aside. And this is what we have. That's a small onion. I basically, when I, I mean, I already made one um, to show you guys. But... Um, so I took one onion, a large onion, cut it in half, and used one for the first pie, and then this one for this pie. Alrighty. Yep, yeah, that should be good. So here we go. So our next step, like I guess it doesn't have to be chopped up real well because it's going to be chopped in a food processor. Just want to make sure that all this meat's cooked, especially the pork. I don't like raw pork. It's disgusting. And actually kind of dangerous. <laughs> Alright, so turn this off. I'm going to put this right into my strainer. I'm trying to do that without getting it all over the place. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to take my strainer and just push the juice out, the grease, all the nasty grease. And try not to get it all over my sink, the uh, rest of the meat. It should only take a couple seconds. Just kind of move it around a little bit. There's a lot that came out. It's still kind of coming out. Okay, so now what we're going to do, like I said, okay, we're going to go to the food processor. Oops. Make sure this is open. All right. Here we go. This goes right into the food processor, and you're just going to basically pulse it. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm making a mess. That's what the dogs are for. Try to do this without getting it all over. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, gonna give us a couple pulses. And here is what we have. So we have basically a minced meat, which is what we're looking for. Make sure all the grease is on the pan. That would help. Then we're going to put this in. Okay, here's the good part. Now we're going to take our spices, which I have here. Um, actually, no. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to dance and fall and anything else for you here, guys, today. I'm going to keep that um, heat on medium. And we're going to add the onions in. Hey, Priyanka. So this is the onions and the garlic that I told you I cooked earlier. I'm going to shove that in. Just let me take this. Put this 
in, kind of incorporate it into the meat mixture. Don't put it too high, you don't need too high. Then we're going to start taking the, um, all the seasonings, which I have here. This is the potato water I told you about that we need a cup of. So we're going to pour that right into the mixture. We have a teaspoon of clove, a teaspoon, let me start back, a teaspoon of poultry seasoning, a teaspoon of cinnamon, um, a teaspoon of ground cloves, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and a teaspoon of allspice, all going into the pan. This was a hard one to remember off the top of my head. I have everything written down in a, a notebook. If I ever lose my notebook, I'm doomed. It's my grandparents' or my grandmother's recipes. My Aunt Lee's in um, Canada. Um, she has some of my grandmother's recipes. And as a kid, I didn't write a lot of this down because I would never thought, hey, I would ever really use this. Plus the fact that they spoke complete French and I didn't understand a word they said. Um, so as I got older, and I'm like, how did she make that? How did she make that? So my family, thank God, my Aunt Lee's um, has a lot of my grandmother's recipes. and She sh gives them to me. And there's some things sometimes, well, not all the time, but there's a lot of recipes like this one. I tweaked it to my, what I thought it should taste like. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. My grandmother was like an amazing cook, but there are some things I just add a little bit more spice. They have a spice in Canada. It was like all of it together, but to get it here in America, we can't really get it. I can't go to Canada. So, and it's like $10 a bottle. And basically everything that I just put in here is what the seasoning is. So why bother? Oh, the pepper. I almost forgot the pepper. Last time I forgot the salt. <laughs> Okay, so basically the water's in the RC, there's nothing, there's no moisture that absorbs right into there. I kind of want to just do that. All right, now here is where the fun part comes. Turn the heat off. Here are those mashed potatoes. Just kind of make sure that they look, I'll show you. I mean, I'm using a hand potato masher, so you know what they look like, I'm thinking, hopefully. Throw this in here. So just that, mashed potatoes right into the pot. Okay. And again, we're going to just incorporate this all together. You have to wash your hands. Okay. So we're just going to put this all together. And that's basically the inside of the pie. So after I get this all incorporated together, see, that's why I said, take the, take the grease out before, then add everything you're supposed to. I used to put the onions in with the meat and then it just kind of like drained it all out and it wasn't really that good. I was like, why am I doing this? So switch it up a little bit and it takes two seconds to fry, saute, I should say, an onion. You're not really frying it. You're just kind of sauteing it, getting that glow to it, they say is where you want it to be translucent. Okay, this looks kind of where I need it to be. So I'll give you guys a little bit. See, it's that's one thing about the potato is you put the potato in and it kind of binds it better than the way that my grandmother, and that's that's how I kind of switch this up to. She was just putting in the meat mixture, not the potato. But I kind of like the potato. I mean, honestly, it's pretty good. All right, so we got that going. Have my pie crust over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk back around here and just fill this baby up completely. I'm so not left-handed. How many things on my left hand? I need to just get in shape. That's my problem. Get myself back to where I used to be. Yeah, I'm a bit of a mess. So I'm trying to rush. I don't know why I'm trying to rush. I guess it's a beautiful Saturday. We don't really need to rush today. It feels good doing this on a Saturday. Now you're just going to carefully move this into place. Let me get my spoon back. It's 
burning hot. I'm not a smart idea to do it with your hands. Just kind of get it in there. Get it in your pot. Dishes. I'll tell you, after I do these shows, my dishes are like, ching. I'm going to feed all my friends over at a Avacolis. <laughs> so that's what it looks like before you put the crust on. So this is where you want it to be. That was, again, one pound of ground beef and one ground of pork. This will do it. Now I'm just going to take my crust, which looks like a shamrock, basically place it on top. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're basically, it's homemade. I mean, it's kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Rustic, I guess you could say. You don't want too much of this crust over it. I love crust, but this is overkill. So you just kind of cut around, around your dish. Keep these pieces in case you need to patch something up. Just kind of feel around. And then, then what you're going to do is kind of push it in so it makes like this, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a cringe look, I guess you could say. And if you guys saw that I've been talking to Fabio Viviani and oh my God, I was like so excited. So he had told me that um, next time he's in Delago, which is our casino out here, in Waterloo, that I can come out and hang with him and cook with him. How exciting is that? I mean, it just blew my mind. That guy, first of all, is awesome. But anyway, all right, now here's what we're gonna do. Now I took an egg with a little bit of water to make an egg wash. You don't have to do this part. I do it again because that's what I've been doing and I altered my recipe and this is how I like it. I put a little bit of sugar in here, like a pinch, just to kind of get the crust to have that like oh, a little bit of a sweet flavor. It's not too overpowering. And then basically all you're going to do is you're going to egg wash this so that it gets brown and you make yourself a nice pie. You can take these leftover pieces and roll it out and make, if you have cookie cutters, make some decorations for your pie and place it on top just for an extra special look if you like. Do that with some apple pies and some cherry pies. Okay, so that should be good enough. I don't want it like sat saturated. Then take your knife. Cut a couple little air holes. Voila, my friends. So there is the pie that's going to go into a 450 degree oven for approximately 40 minutes or until it browns. Let me make sure this ain't too hot still. No. And then I'll shove this in here. And I will show you the finished product. Ooh, it's hot. Okay. Window is open. Let's like, ching, way too hot. Okay, now what we're going to do is show you the volume. I think we're kind of clean up a little bit of a mess here. Oh, actually, no, I'm just going to show you. should be cool enough now. I cooked this before I started. Here is the finished product. So this is what the pie looks like. Beautiful, isn't it? It's a, a good meal. I mean, it's hearty and it's cheap. I mean, you're basically making everything from scratch, which I love to do. It doesn't cost much for flour and Butter's probably the most expensive thing besides the meat, but even the meat, it's ground beef and pork. I'll cut a piece to show you guys what it looks like. I gotta use a knife, I gotta use a different knife. And a skinny spatula. So I'm just gonna cut. You wanna let it sit for 10 minutes. That's another thing when you take out the oven. Let it sit for 10 minutes to cool down a little bit and kind of get the um, consistency of a pie, not falling all over the place because it's too hot. My daughter was like, she, Bella's dying for this, and I'm like, as soon as I uh, do this, you can have a piece. I mean, the first piece of pie, you know, is always a pain in the rear to take out, but this wasn't too bad. <laughs> take the rest of it and just kind of put it on the plate. Ah, more stuff for the dog. I'm doing good today, guys. 
And this is what it looks like. Amazingly, amazingly awesome. So I hope you try it. Go to www.foodblogusa.com for the recipe. And my podcast is always also on there, not in the same post. You'll see it on there as a separate post. Um, please like my page. Please share. And I will see you guys next week. Not 100% sure what I'm making yet, but I will definitely let you know on Facebook. Take care. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Relax. Sun's coming out. Have fun, guys.